So last time I've shared with you some tips on, on how to choose between vulnerability assessment and how to choose between penetration tests and actually how to avoid those altogether by ensuring that, that your SDLC is high quality and also takes security into consideration. And now let's take a look at nine steps to make sure that you optimize the outcome of your investments, if any of those initiatives. So I'll be focusing on penetration tests and bug bounties. I may be using those names interchangeably, but actually uh, I, I realize that they are different, but for the sake of this video and this tutorial, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they are all very similar in the way you should approach and respect them. So let's jump in already. First of all, you must realize one thing. That, that's the most important thing. The mindset around this is the most important thing you should take care of, which is that when you hire penetration testers or bug bounty hunters, they are not your opponents. You are in this all together and the mission of your team and mission of higher pen testers is to help you build more robust protections. So make sure that you have those mindsets aligned with the objective of those penetration tests. So when you hire penetration testers, don't fight them. Don't be rude. They are not hackers. They are not people coming after your business or your position at the company. If you hire penetration testers, make sure you put your ego in check so you don't block them. Make sure that when you collaborate with them, you don't feel afraid that they will be better than you. That's why we hire them. That's the whole concept. We want to use them, use their expertise to find flaws you haven't found, your team haven't found, so you can focus on other things and also more eyes you have looking at your organization and your application and infrastructure is better. So you don't fight them. Provide them with all information necessary. Don't assume they will find it all on their own. More information uh, about APIs, uh, how application works, the purpose of application, your infrastructure, your technology stack you provide them, more of this you provide them, the better. The better results you are going to have if you provide them all those info beforehand. If you are paying some company a lot of money to test your application, you don't want them to waste that money on doing basic recon, reconnaissance. You want to provide them all that info so they can move into testing as soon as possible. That should be your objective. So that's one. Provide them with all information necessary. Don't play games and don't block them as they do their job. That's very important. I've seen many times blue teams, defensive teams, software engineers, internal security teams fixing security issues while pen testers were testing the application and then claiming that there wasn't any issue in the first place, which is just wrong. It doesn't lead to anything um, positive. This is just a, a bad attitude. If you have attitude when paying someone money to do something for you, that's wrong. That's not how businesses are run. You pay them money to build a relationship, to learn something from each other, not to block each other. The third one. Be humble and thoroughly follow Pentester recommendations in terms of issues remediation. What I mean by that? Let me explain. When they report you some issue, they report you some flaw and propose how it should be fixed, don't underestimate those issues. Don't undermine their expertise and don't undermine severity of the reported issue. Obviously, you have some business knowledge. You should have um, performed a risk assessment on the identified issues, but don't throw any report to the trash just because you don't like it. Don't be afraid of taking a leap and improving your organization. If they recommend you to use some different library, different technology stack, don't say no immediately. Really revisit that idea 
And think about it. Maybe it's actually a good idea. Maybe your software engineering teams would appreciate that. Maybe they wanted to do that anyways, and they just haven't had resources. But with your push, you can kill two birds with one stone. So you can fix security issues, make sure they don't appear in the first place in the future. And you also unblock your software engineering teams to put some innovation in your organization. So that's the other one. Be humble, don't argue with them, don't underestimate them, let them know what you think, brainstorm it, exchange the knowledge and find the best solution. The other one. Find the root cause of every single issue and learn what could be done in the future. I've seen many organizations just fixing the issue and um, walking proudly and happily that they have addressed the issue. But it doesn't matter if the next time pen testers come in and they identify the same issue. It doesn't matter that you address this specific security issue if you haven't addressed the root cause. It may be um, a framework, programming framework, a language with bad defaults that trick software engineers into doing something the way they do. It may be lack of proper education and investment in education in your company. It may be lack of tests. So always perform root cause analysis and make sure that you identify all issues of the same flavor so that they don't come up again. That's the waste of time, waste of money. Look at the big picture and think about other places where the same issue may exist, but hasn't been found by penetration testers. So listen, when you ask penetration testers to test some application, but you know you have a couple other applications using the same programming language, programming technology, software stack, then just take those lessons you've learned on this one pen test and apply that knowledge to other applications. So when they provided you with a report, that shows you how to test the application, shows you which libraries are vulnerable, then check if any other application um, in your network doesn't have the same issues. Simple as that. It doesn't cost you anything more. You don't need to pay them to do that. You receive the knowledge once, now put it into practice. Look at the big picture. You've paid the money already. Why not use it to the maximum? Optimize everything you can. You've received the report, address the issues in the main application first, and then pass it to the respective teams so they verify if there aren't any more rooms for improvements in other apps, in other places of applications. You may have hidden APIs, internal APIs, all that stuff. Penetration testers may uh, haven't had even access to those because they are behind VPN. But hacker, actual hacker, malicious hacker may be behind VPN and may want to abuse those flaws. So look at the big picture. That's one. Have your engineering teams learn from pen testers and study pen test report. If you are a product owner, product manager, security engineer, don't keep it all for yourself. Pass it to the software engineers. Obviously with your guidance, you want to um, explain to them What's all, what is it all about, uh, how it works, how it happened, why it's needed, uh, that you are there to explain thoroughly some issues if they don't understand them well, all that stuff. So you want to make sure that they know you have their back, but don't keep it for yourself. Share it with other people. Let them learn. You've paid the money for their knowledge. Share that knowledge. Scale it. Teach other people. Another one, cover identified bugs with solid regression test cases. This is an important one, because as a penetration testers, we do not want to come to your organization and identify exactly the same issues all over again, because we are wasting our time. And what's more important is that between you have one pen test and another, when we have a chance to identify those issues and report to you, in that time span between pen tests, 
some actually malicious attacker may find those flaws and abuse them to access your system, to compromise your system. So make sure that you don't have regressions. Make sure that you teach your software engineers how to incorporate security testing into their existing um, tests. Teach QA engineers how to incorporate security tests into their testing scenarios and test cases. That's why I previously said that you should share that knowledge with everyone so that people know how to um, take max value out of it. Because your perspective may be that you are asked to um, perform penetration tests, address security issues and provide it to the uh, board of stakeholders that, hey, this is fine, we, we, we fix it to the board of executives and explain to them how well you've done your job. That may be your objective. You may not have more time to do it, to do other things, but your team, other teams in your organization may just want to do it. So, so let them know, teach them and use their expertise, domain knowledge to apply the security wisdom to their day-to-day -day work. They will know what to do with it. Once in a while, check changes made by pen testers. Visit their profiles and domains you provided them for tests and verify that all is fixed actually. So that's, that's what you want to do. You want to have penetration testers test your application. You want to um, write unit tests, but you also want to use their environments to make sure that those regressions have been addressed. So just to make sure that there isn't anything broken. Um, after, if you provide penetration test, testers some account, application account, some user role so they can test stuff and, and all that. When you have done that, they completed the test, you fixed all issues, then log in as that user you had provided them and see what they have done. See what changes, they, changes they've done. Maybe they also broke UI. There was some issue with encoding that broke the UI in an ugly way, but they haven't reported it because it's not their objective. They don't have time. They are not asked to find UI issues or UX issues or functional issues. They have very uh, small amount of time to report only relevant security issues. When you log into the account, you may notice that there is much more than just security tests. There is much more than security issues and you can fix that. You can improve your application in various matters. So do that and also review your application logs for two reasons. One, so you can learn about stuff. You may uh, identify in your application logs some uncatched exceptions, badly handled exceptions, internal server errors, Issues of the type, you may look for leakages caused by unhandled exceptions, not well at least handled exceptions. That's important. That's what you should try to do, to review also logs and make sure that, this, uh, that the backend handled it very well. You should also learn from logs so that you know what hackers do, how they test your application and write monitoring about it. So, for example, pass it to the IT ops team, DevOps team, let's say, that's how they call it nowadays, and make sure that they have basic monitoring in checks for the keywords that are used by pentesters and attackers. So the next time you are not performing, you know that you are not performing penetration tests, but you notice your automation, uh, your automated monitoring notices that there are those payloads in the access logs, in application logs, you may react. You give yourself an opportunity to react because this time it may be an actual attacker that's trying to test your application, attack your application. So think about it. Just, I, I guess, uh, eight or nine points. How much knowledge? How many more things you can do with penetration testing engagement? It's not just about having a report with issues, addressing those issues, and we can all go home happily. At least not if our concern is making sure that our company is actually much more secure and that we don't waste our money and time.
And time is money, so let's double just ways of money. That's it. I, I guess that was important uh, one. Thank you very much for your attention. And keep them in mind that mindset is very powerful. You want to work with all those companies to make your business better? Not fight them. Not argue with them. You want to create relationship? So you maximize the outcome for your business.